Hi, Stacy Marcel here, licensed arborist and horticulturalist. I'm here with my associate, Kate O'Dell, also licensed arborist. And while we mostly deal in the world of woody plants, our passion has brought us here now to talk to you about spring vegetable gardening tips. We want to focus first and foremost on the soil that our plants are growing in, because just like any plant, soil, healthy soil, vibrant soil is the key to success. That soil preparation begins in the fall with your garden shut down. Okay, what do we do? What do we do in the fall? Once we've ripped everything out, when it's done making good stuff for us and we toss it out probably to compost it, uh, we want to take some cardboard or some wet newspaper and we want to lay it down over everything. And on top of that, put a good few inches of compost and just let that steep for the whole winter. Why do we do that? Um, so it's going to break down over that whole period and by the spring when we plant all that good stuff that's in the compost is going to be in the soil and ready to go and also the cardboard and the newspaper are going to help you keep all your weeds down. Compost, right? So mm -hmm. we talk like about compost. You mentioned you can take all your old plant debris and you can compost that. Any matter that you produce in your household that's organic, your food scraps, uh, eggshells, coffee grinds, what else can you put in your compost? Really any vegetable or fruit leftover, um, any th or food that you're not going to eat that isn't meat, um, instead of throwing it out, you can put it in compost and get some use out of it. Uh, the important part when you're composting though is you need oxygen. Oxygen is what will cause the breakdown of the organisms in your compost. So make sure you do it in probably one thing that's easy for you to put it in and turn it. Um, if you make a pile, you're gonna have to go out there and shovel it. Yes. Uh, so of course, because we're all pressed for time, we wanna make sure that we do things in a way that we're actually able to do. So make it easy, buy yourself a composter if it's yeah. what you wanna do. If you're just starting out, start small. Um, but that compost that you produce, you can put down, as Kate said, as a top layer on top of whatever weed preventer you're putting down in your garden. Um, and if you don't compost, you can go out and you can source it elsewhere, but what do you need, Kate, if you're going to get compost from an outside source? You need to make sure that it's good. <laughs> so you have to ask where you get it from for their analysis. Um, they'll get it from the state, from any, anywhere that does testing, but you want to make sure that what you're getting is good. You want to look at that organic matter, that that number is high, and that it's, there's not a lot of sand in it. So. Right. And if they won't give you the analysis, you need to run for the hills that means their compost is no good. So you don't want to put something that's no good in your garden. So they either give you the analysis or you're out the door. Okay, you understand compost now. You understand how important what's in the soil is to your crop. But let's talk about a few tips for first-time gardeners. Um, we see a lot of common mistakes. So garden placement. You should make sure that your garden is in a nice sunny location. You want to get full eight hours of sun a day. If you don't, it's going to be a miserable failure. Um, and you want to put your garden close enough to your house so that you're going to leave the house and come out and tend to your garden. If you put the garden up a hill or some obscure place, chances are you can have a long day. You might not want to venture out there as if it was more accessible to you. Uh, and then, Kate, talk to me about the scope and the scale of your garden. Yes. So for first time gardeners, it's better to start small. Uh, plant as much as you think you'll use and don't get overzealous. It's pretty easy to plant too much of things and just be drowning in zucchini. It happens all the time. <laughs> or to have too much square footage of garden yes. and the weeding and the maintenance becomes a chore yes. and now all of a sudden this thing you wanted to do that was going to be fun has become something that you want to give up on because you just went too big too quickly. Uh, something I learned firsthand when you make your garden Stick to rows. Don't make big rectangles of open soil. This, it makes it a lot easier to get to all your plants and it's also a lot less weeding. I think then we want to talk about the crops that you're going to select. Mm -hmm. um, know which plants are going to grow best for your area and your climate. Do a little research before you get out there and just go buy plants. Don't just, don't just wing it. Plant it a little bit. You'll be more successful. We're going to talk a little bit about tomatoes because tomatoes are a really popular beginner crop for people. Um, Kate's going to show you here the right way to plant one. Okay, so I'll come up here. <laughs> so you can see this first set of leaves on here. 
When we plant this, unlike planting other things in your garden, you're gonna wanna come all the way up there because this is gonna sprout roots and be much more stable. And I'm sure if you have tried tomatoes in the past before, they do tend to flop over. So as much stability as we can get, the better. Um, so we can see here, this general three to four foot spacing with our, our big shrubby um, tomatoes is what we want. Uh, any closer and they're gonna be all growing into each other and you can get a lot of really icky problems, so. Hey Kate, did you ever plant a garden and forget to put your tomato cages on right away? I did. What happened? They grew everywhere. They fell over, things rotted on the ground. It was awful. So it seems simple, but do not forget your tomato cages and put them on right away when you plant because trust me, trying to go over your tomato plant like this once it's bigger just does not work. So you're gonna plant that thing to the proper depth, give it extra root support, and then you're gonna give it something to hold it up uh, or your tomato season will be unsuccessful. If you don't wanna forget what's what and you're new and you don't identify the plants, what's a good way? Uh, just keep all those little tags that they came with and just put them right next to them in the soil. Don't discard, keep right next to your plant when you plant. And when you are planting a garden, there are a lot of what we call companion plants that are gonna have added benefits to your garden in terms of organic pest control. Um, you ever smell the marigold? What's it smell like? It smells like skunks. So you don't like it, the bugs don't like it. I think it's pretty, but if you plant this in conjunction with your tomatoes and your basil and all your other crops, this is gonna be a natural insect repellent as well as repelling deer and rabbits. Allium, chives, garlic all do the same thing, so planting those intermittently around your garden uh, always very helpful in keeping the pest populations down. Yep. Kate's holding diatomaceous earth, and that is a big co component in not only our gardening but our organic lawn programs that we do. Yes, um, and instead of killing things through pesticides and chemical pathways, poisons. poisons. This is like a zillion tiny knives. So we sprinkle this down and insects, as they crawl over them, they get all cut up and then they bleed out and die as so, well as a bud can. Um, we don't put this down until we finish the garden. Yes. We do not till this in because then you'll hurt those beneficial that we worked into the soil with our compost. You'll hurt the earthworms uh, and the other microbes. We're trying to kill the bad guys. Slugs, earwigs, weevils. Centipedes, yeah, other oh, caterpillars, cockroaches. I guess maybe yeah. we have more of those down south, but silverfish, all kinds of bad guys. So if you just slightly put this over the surface of your soil and don't incorporate it, we're going to target the bad guys, leaving the good guys to help us in our soil. Yes. And strategically, one of the things that we did here with this garden was right on the outside, we planted two crab apples. Uh, that's going to attract pollinators. Pollinators. No garden will be successful without the bees and the other solitary, singular living pollinators to spread the pollen of our plants and germinate. So right outside the front, we have a stand of peonies. So after the crab apples are done blooming, the peonies will go into bloom. And the longer that you can have something blooming to attract pollinators near your garden, uh, the better. Yeah. Uh, the last thing that we want to talk to you about as a gardening tip is watering. Along with the soil, watering is the key to life, right? Yeah. Nothing growing lives without water. Now, it's better, honestly, to err on the side of less water. It is. Because it's pretty easy to revive a plant that's a little yeah. dry. Yes. But when you overwater, you are going to end up with problem after problem yeah. after problem. Um, starting with the root system, because what happens when roots are left in a saturated soil? Uh, well, the whole plant becomes stressed. Why? First of all, because it can't. It needs oxygen to to thrive. It doesn't just need water. Um, so there's that. You already have a stressed plant, and from there, things compound. Half inch of water a week. Yep. If there's no precipitation. So if it's raining, make sure you shut your irrigation off. Mm -hmm. You don't want to double up. That's a quick way to overwater. Mm -hmm. um, you start to see things yellowing that could be a good indicator that you are overwatering as well. Really hope you enjoyed our tips for gardening. If there's anything else you need, definitely reach out to us, call us. You can hit us up on the email, mm -hmm. info at northeasthorticultural.com. You can call the office. What's yes. the number? 
203-375-0553. All right, thank you. <laughs>